Hi, it's Ken McNamara from KRE Race Engines, and today we'll take you through one of our supercar engine packages. So with the team, we, we, we have like a, a yearly contract where we, we'll service the engines, we'll supply, they'll do the X amount of kilometres, which could be anywhere from three to 5,000 kilometres. When it does get to its mileage, we'll completely strip it, crack test, everything's, everything's kept like an aeroplane where it's got to be mileaged out at a certain kilometre. And then we'll um, put them back together, we, we travel to the track, we tune them at the racetrack for fuel economy and any other thing that, that the teams require. But all the engines are the same spec, so every team that we, we look after we basically have the same map in each engine, so they all sort of really just fine tuning it for each driver. Well, most times they only get new engine is when, like say, Triple Eight, you sell a car and then you've got to replace it. Most of the engines, like say Brad Jones Racing and those things, they're 10 year old. Um, the blocks, once they get to maximum bore size, will resleeve and go back to standard bore size and go again. Talking $160,000 for a new engine, so it's not something you want to buy too often. A rebuild's, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars because you, you go through quite a few parts because you don't want any failures until the next four to five thousand kilometres, so the parts have to have to do quite a long period of time. So um, yeah, it's more that they're, once they're running, it's it's got quite a long lifespan as an engine. I mean, some engines are going on 20 year old in some of the old Ford engines, so. But generally, we, we try to do three to three and a half thousand kilometres, and then and then we've had some where we can do, we've been up to five and a half thousand kilometres, and, and we, when we dyno them, sometimes you'll see the motor drop off two horsepower, sometimes it's six or seven, depending on how much dirt it's come through the airbox and the air filter. With the engine over, over the years, you know, most of it's obviously been R&D. As the rules change, we sort of work through different, um, different parts of the engine. Now we have a maximum power limit, so the engine's at that number. So now we have to keep, keep it at that number, not let it drop off one or 2%, and also adjust the power curve within that. The whole engine's logged, cab drawings, files, so supercars have all that. For us to change something in the motor now, we have to make a, a lodge, lodgement for that and then it has to be re dynoed by supercars. Before that, we were always cylinder head, um, trying to you know, get the right power curve, rings, less friction, you know, trying to get a lot of friction out of the motors. A um, drivability is always a, a critical thing. You, you can also make a bit more power, but then the motor's not as nice to drive, which, which then doesn't give you the tire life. So there's a lot of factors that, that also create power, and fuel economy is probably one of the biggest ones where you, know, you can make a bit more power, but then if you've got to spend an extra three or four seconds in the pits to put fuel in, you'll lose three spots. I think in the 21 years that I've been doing it for, back then we were all on a, a 2050 oil, because yeah, there was only certain things available. These days, you can run a 5W30, even a 020, and run all Bathurst without a problem. What we've noticed over the years, we see a lot less wear. So back in mid 2000s, we'd rebuild a motor every single race. So we'd come back, engine completely apart, off we go to another race again. And, and some of that was the oil, you know, also back then on, on 98 petrol. To get to get you know, 5,000 kilometers out of, a, out of a race engine that's you know, turning 7,500, you know, it's 650 horsepower, it, it really, we'd, we see very little wear. It's normally something's gone wrong that's not all related, that's more the problem. I think over, over the years, I mean, it'll be 30, 40, 50 different brands of oil we've tried in different, you know, Speedway as well as supercars. But um, I think the last few years we, we were purchasing, you know, US um, made oil, which was always good quality. And we sort of noticed, you know, it was always difficult to get and, and things like that. And then we started trying some of the local stuff more to say, well, their oil was coming out as a race oil. And, I was actually quite surprised how, how good it was and in the testing we did on the, initially on the dyno with power because it's, it's easier to measure a horsepower gain but the durability was a matter of you know to go and do two or three thousand kilometres in one car, pull it apart, look good, do it again and then we'd put into two cars and then three cars and then you sort of see the, the distance of the customers and that running the oil. It was good I think you know to me if we can buy locally and, and use a good local product we don't need to buy the US based oil because it's it's made as good or better here. They call them Aurora, they're a short deck, 8.2 inch high block. I mean, these are a cast iron, they're custom made for, for Holden Motorsport, um, custom made for the supercar. 55 mil camshaft, raised up, a, um, they're a compact graphite block, so it makes them quite stiffer, makes them trickier to hone. These are, they're all five litre engine, and just, they've got to be to match the rules for a supercar, so everything, everything has a spec. 
Yeah, I suppose the most critical thing is the honing of the of the engine. That's probably where the power is. So we, we do that with the yeah the Rotler CNC hone that we have, and then the rest of it's just clearances, crack test. You know, make sure nothing's crash damaged, things like that. But the blocks are quite robust. Yeah, that that that'll last you for said probably 10, 15 to 20 years of it if you don't have any any damage with it. Most of the teams are on similar stuff. This is a Bryant Racing billet crankshaft we've been using for 20 something years, Ford and Chevy. Yeah, they're 2.960 strokes, so they're quite a short stroke to, to beat the five litre rule. This one's Santa Cana weighted, your Honda, Honda Big In Journal. The minimum, we have a rule of 16.5 kilos is the minimum they can be. Um, they're on big block snout, just to allow more strength when all the pulleys are stacked on the front, you don't have any cracking on the, on the front of the crankshaft. But yeah, very durable, you know, 30, 40,000 kilometres. You run the crankshaft, very rarely do they crack. Probably got some out there with 50,000 plus in Super 2. Yeah, a lot of these are counterweights, you know, quite thin. Obviously, a lot of that's made for windage. So when it's trying to cut through the, the oil mist inside the crankcase, they want everything quite narrow. And, and so where a normal crankshaft is, you know, a lot thicker all the way through. These are balanced, you know, it's sort of 50, 50, 51%. So they're overbalanced slightly, but they, um, just for the RPM. But most of that design there is, you know, for, for torsional twist as well as, as the wind is just trying to really cut that down so it, it, you, know, you gain some power. We use the Carrillo, which the majority of the teams do. Good H-beam rod, been around for years. Um, we run 866 pin, so it's a smaller wrist pin. They've got a um, 3.8 car bolt, a quite a good Conrad bolt. You never have to replace them. Uh, the rules state you know, minimum of 500 grams of, of the weight rule, so you, you could be a lot lighter if you wanted to be, but these ones actually are EDM drilled, so they have a drilling down through the center of the Conrod to help feed oil to the, um, the little end just to help with lubrication when you run the crankcase vacuum. We, we do sort of between 12 and 14,000 kilometres on a set of con rods and we, we change them out just, just in case we, we have a failure. Yeah, I mean, the, these pistons are made by uh, Bill Miller Engineering in Nevada, in California, and he, he, he does, they do a lot of NASCAR stuff as well, but they, um, yeah, they're all, they're all a box forging, so they're all, they, these are forged, but they're all CNC lightened all the way around. DLC coated pin. The ring package is probably the main advantage of the piston. They're 0 0.7, 0 0.7, two millimeter. Uh, the rules, we can't be, you can't go down a 0.5, but we, we, no one's allowed to. The cost wise is, you know, these rings are nearly $2,000 a set now. Going to the narrower ring, um, obviously gives you a lot less friction, but also it gives you better conformability to the board. Well, the old days you had quite a stiff ring. The board would move and the ring would just stay, but now the ring will actually follow the ball, and you notice it in the blow-by. The ring seals a lot better with a narrower ring. You think, oh, gee, it will wear out quicker, but these have a, like a titanium nitride coating on the top ring, and that's why we, you get such high mileage out of the ring, because it's, it's, it's actually quite stronger, even though it's half the size. The top ring groove has to be anodized. The lateral clearance is so tight, there's another uh, process in the, in the anodizing of the top ring groove, which adds cost to the piston. That's the level of, of supercar and NASCAR. That's, those forms of, of motorsport where you've got to have that part to, to make the power. We have a, a 500 gram weight for piston and pin, where years ago we could we'd get down into a, a 390, 400 gram piston, but they crack pretty much one or two races. I mean, with the engine oil, especially in the, the ring to the to the hone, is you've got so much fuel dilution washing the fuel out of the hone. The oil, especially if you're running a, a heavier weight oil, the, the, the lighter oils you know, tend to stay in the crosshatch better in the hone, so when the piston's running over it, it's, it's, it's still lubricated. Once once you, you haven't got enough you know, depth or, or, or the correct hone pattern, the oil just gets scraped off the bore and then, then you get skirt wear, ring wear, blow by goes up and it'll, it'll wear the ring completely out of the piston. I think over the years of testing, and we, we found, and that's one thing we said we found with the, the Newland oil was it, it worked well with the 85. The abuse to oil temperatures and stuff that we put through in, with, with the supercar racing, that it, it worked quite well with that, um, in, in those type of conditions. Bearing wear has been quite good. You know, you, you with the with the dry sump system, you know, the bearing wear is basically nil. You might get a very small bit of debris every now and again if you, you give it a wear off the cast iron or something like that, but that's probably one part of the engine. It doesn't even show a problem. Well, with your conventional dry sump pump, you know, bolts the side of your block, the all pump pulleys on the front. What we did a few years ago, we, we built a, a billet sump because you've got a, a cross member under the car and, it's, and they want everything low for, for handling. So you, you very hard to run oil lines and stuff like we did 15 years ago. So um, Daly from Daly Engineering, they made a, a custom pump, which same thing, majority of the teams use. And then we, we mount that to the side of the oil pan and, and the oil pan has all the galleries internally in it. So 
it's just compact. It's where the mechanics have the steering rack and all that stuff in the car. You've got plenty of space. Uh, this is a six-stage pump, so you'll have each each set of conrods has basically got its own oil pan. So there, and then you've, you have one other valley in the pressure section. Uh, I think G-forces are the biggest the biggest thing. You know, your cornering, your corner speeds are so high. Drag racing, acceleration, or start line so hard. You know, wet sump, the oil just climbs straight up the back of the motor, hit the crankshaft, and then gets quite aerated, and then usually you start to see bearing problems because the oil's just it's just getting hammered by the crankshaft. And in road racing the, and speedway, the cornering just, it, it wants to climb away from the pickup. And it doesn't matter how hard you try and do it, then you've got to try and run big sumps. And so the, the, these, even though they're expensive, they're still good value for money because they will look after the rest of the motor because you're not having bearing issues and stuff like we saw 20, 25 years ago where these things were a, sort of a bit of a luxury. They found, well, we can create a negative pressure in the, in the um, crankcase, like up to, say, 20, 22 inches. On the dyno, there's about six, six to seven horsepower on that. The negative two is you're pulling all the oil off the wrist pins. Any part in the high in the engine, is the oil is not, not misting there like it would. But that's where your power cag comes from because the windage is sort of nearly null, null and void. You know, we did quite a bit of testing a few years ago with, with some clear oil tanks to see how different oils foamed up. It's definitely related with fuels, especially alcohol-based fuels like methanol and E85, those sort of things where, where um, some oils created more air bubbles. The fuel was, was coming up to temperature. Once the oil temperature got to about 100 Celsius, well then it would level out and come good, but the damage is usually being done to the bearings and, and other components up to that stage. But yeah, we found with Neulon that the um, aeration was quite good, a lot less air bubbles, and that's yeah, a lot of the anti packages that they have in, have in the oil. Yeah, the camshaft we use in the, in the supercar engine is a control camshaft from ComCams in the US, made to a spec for supercars, and um, everyone buys off the same supplier. Um, they run a, a zero thrust hub on the front, so we have no end float. In the old days when we had freedom for camshafts, we made 15 to 20 more horsepower, but we broke some stuff. Supercars put this on there, I think it was six, seven years ago, and it's been, been good. It's sort of, we, we sort of gained that power back in other areas. So with the camshafts, we found with, they're quite susceptible to oil. You can see the lines in them. The, what we found with some oils is the, the lifter will then will break down and the needle rollers will start to, to wear and then obviously the lifter will then skid on the camshaft and then fail the camshaft. We normally get anywhere from 15 to 25,000 kilometres out of camshaft. You know, if the lifter has, a, has an issue, it could be, it could, we could tear a lobe off in 5,000 kilometres. So it's, the oil is quite important in, in how it looks after the, the coating and the needles to, to uh, make sure that we don't wear the camshaft out. It's a keyway lifter, so it slots into the blocks. There's no tie bar. Um, it's a, that's a 937 keyway, so it's quite a large lifter. That gives you a bigger axle, which is more strength. And then obviously the push rod, we limited to the push rod size. We can run by the rules, but that's that's sort of where we end up with supercar stuff. And then the rocker arms, um, you've got the aluminium type rocker. We run a steel rocker in the sprint cars, which are a lot stronger. But by the rules, we're saying we have to run these and these with a, a bronze bush in it just to sort of take away from the needle roller wear. Most of these parts are the same for, for NASCAR or drag racing, and they're really a part that it's made to fit the engine, but that would fit another type of Chevy motor if, if it was, if you needed it. Yeah, the cylinder heads everything. That's the bit where you'll be fast or not. Because they're only a five litre, you know, the engine can only pull what it can, so you are talking about the velocity and, and different ways and what happens in the port, the size of it. You know, there's more the mechanics than just airflow numbers, where if you had a, you know, six or seven litre engine, the airflow is there because the engine can use it. So the, these are a little bit different, but these are a custom cylinder head, made, same thing made for Holden, um, a splayed valve to, to match the D3 Ford head a few years ago. So they, um, they had to make, it's been through a few revisions, these are, these are 006s. But yeah, they, they, they make good power and they, they're quite reliable. Yeah, you just cut the seats, they're the same thing, you know, probably 15,000 kilometres before we have to replace them. Yeah, I mean, there's different theories and philosophies with, with, with the, the port finish. Some like the smooth finish, some like the a slight coarse finish to help detach the, the air and fuel from the side of the port. Yeah, that's really is a preference. I, I don't think one way is better than the other. Yeah, we run a 7 mil valve on intake, 516s on the exhaust. Um, same thing, we're only limited to 7,500 RPM, so it's not really a bad issue for valve train, but um, it's more just downshifts and stuff from the drivers that really give it a hard time. But each team's got its own port, and then once that's homologated with supercars, we give them the the CAD drawing for the port, so when they when they strip our engine, check it, they will run the um, ferro arm in there and measure it and make sure it matches what we give them so we can't just change it somewhere like we used to do years ago. It's more just massaging it over the years. We, we change a little bit and a little bit and then we we get driver feedback and then dyno because it's, it's a bit of fuel economy. You want to make sure you don't, the port does affect on the way the fuel burns and atomizes in it. It's just refining what you do each year and say, right, we're going to make a change. And it's really just bog porting, airflow bench. It's just, a lot of it's just time and, and work really doing it. There's, 
there's always theories and philosophies, but it's more just getting familiar with what race car is asking for. Yeah, well, this one was from uh, Car 35 MSR, which is uh, Todd Hazelwood. We built that before Sandown and did Bathurst, Gold Coast, and then obviously New Zealand and, and um, Newcastle. So it's, it's done about, I think, 5,300 kilometres now. And as you can see, the components have all come out in, in quite good shape. And they're, they're running the, the 5W30 Neulon, and, and that's, yeah, we've seen with, with oil tests and, and how the motors looked. Um, we, you know, we saw what we saw on the dyno power-wise, but yeah, it's been, we've been very happy with the wear and stuff that we see when these, these engines come apart of that mileage. Yeah, that, that was high mileage because that engine was built before Bathurst when they switched manufacturers. So they, they, most, most times we put a fresh, fresh engine in for Bathurst. But because they did that and they ran right through, being, have, having the one engine, um, yeah, we are very happy with, with the way it looked. In, in some of the engines we've pulled apart at two and a half, three thousand kilometres, it, it looked the same. Yeah, we have a custom water pump. It's a billet water pump made by Triple Eight. Harmonic balances ATI. The chopper wheel in behind it, uh, Bosch Motorsport alternator, um, Exeldyne belt drive. We run an Alice 7 coil, just a AC Dolco. Uh, yeah, we use the Bosch Motorsport. It's a CO plug, it's a service discharge. We've had great success with these, especially in the sprint car motors and the supercar engines where the power drops off once the plug gets hot. And once we run these things in this and, and the sprint car engines, you know, sprint cars can pick up 30, 40 horsepower just with the plug not being, basically not detonating. It's probably just a design and spark plug that um, Bosch have come up with and um, yeah, done, done a good job with it. We run a Bosch motorsport and fuel injector. The regulator is in the boot of the car by the rules, so there's just one feed line to the motor and just no return. Yeah, it's all eight butterfly individual runner engine. This is all custom made to suit the cylinder head, so it's yeah, it's not nothing you can buy. Each race team builds their own manifold. Over the years, we sort of worked closely with Triple Eight with the design of the manifold and they'll machine it up in their, in their, in their machine shop. Um, with all the plumbing and stuff, like, you know, you all run the Stubley connectors, which are like a, a dry break um, for the fuel, the oil, on the Wiggins clamps, on the water pump, Brown and Miller hose systems, lightweight hose through the whole car. But it's all, all made so a motor like this can be probably replaced in the car hour, hour and a half if all goes to plan. So the compression ratio we, we, by the rules were only 10 to 1, which is back from when we used to run 98. But these days we could probably run 12 or 13 with the 85, but we're, we're still at 10 to 1 by the rules. But they, um, the, yeah, when you work out the power of a cubic inch, you know, it's up with a NASCAR engine or a pro stock engine, it's actually very efficient. But, but it's just from years of just, just fine tuning that same motor over and over, and a little bit here, a little bit there. And on our dyno, they, they, they all read a bit differently, but we, we, we see about, about 645. Mm -hmm. 